some people might say, Ivan, you didn't build a quantum computer, you built an NMR device. To those people I say, ¿Por qué no los dos? <laughs> years and there's a few types of quantum computers you can build there's a superconducting quantum computer but that one requires liquid nitrogen or liquid helium you know things like that uh, there's trapped ion quantum computers those require uh, high voltages dangerous voltages and uh, liquid hydrogen liquid helium and there's optical quantum computers and those require single photon sources and optical tables and they get pretty expensive. But there's another type of quantum computer called an NMR quantum computer. In 2001, IBM used this uh, quantum computer to factor the number 15 into, you know, 3 and 5. And it seemed doable to me to build something like this, but I wasn't sure where to start. So I looked around and I found this revolutionary paper by the uh, uh, professor Carl Michel, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, from the University of British Columbia. He describes how to build an NMR device uh, using hardware supplies and an Arduino. I contacted him and he was happy to provide the software uh, script to run on the Arduino. So the nuclei that we're going to be using as our qubits are the hydrogen nuclei in uh, water. So the water is held in this tank. Um, basically, it's a few layers in. So the first layer is this aluminum uh, Faraday tube, and that is um, about two or three millimeters thick. And if you look at the uh, Q factor or the quieting, I don't remember what it's called, but um, the dampening for that, I think it removes like 90% of noise at two kilohertz. Don't quote me on that. And so, yeah, that helps keep the noise out. Then we have a, the polarizing coil, which lines up the hydrogen nuclei. And then we have the transceiver coil inside of that, which uh, we use to talk to the hydrogen nuclei. And then finally, we have the water which um, the system is set up so that really any Gatorade style bottle will fit in here and it'll have the right amount of water and you just kind of plug it in. So the water in at room temperature, the nuclei at room temperature, are scattered around willy-nilly. Uh, I mean there's the earth's magnetic field with help, which helps line up some of the nuclei because they're kind of like tiny bar magnets, but um, yeah, they're still pretty randomized. So the first thing we do is we have this polarization coil and really what it is, and here is a blank PCB for it, um, really what it is is this section up here is for us to send commands from the Arduino and then an optocoupler goes here which basically just separates everything electrically so noise can't go back and forth because noise is your worst enemy in this project. And uh, yeah, so then we put some FETs here. Uh, they're basically like electronic switches. And those switches let the small signal from the optocoupler from the Arduino uh, control the amount of, you know, large amount of power which we run through these uh, thick copper lines, and as you can see them here. And yeah, that lets us take power in from our power supply and then it sends it out through the coil. So the way 
a NMR device works is we're trying to tell the hydrogen nuclei to flip. Those are going to be our bits, our qubits. And then we need to listen to the nuclei flip back. The nuclei are like tiny magnets and they're mostly facing in random directions due to being at room temperature. They do slightly prefer pointing towards the Earth's pole though, lining up in that direction. So the first thing we do is we use the polarizing circuit to force them all to line up in one direction and then we let them relax so that they all uniformly point towards the, the Earth's field. And when I say all, I mean, you know, more than before. And then we can strum them. We can kind of get them to oscillate back and forth uh, using our transceiver coil. Now, this strumming can't be ham-fisted. We have to craft it carefully. So there are six op amps in this system. And if you, you can kind of split up this uh, electronic device into those six stages. So after we've polarized the, the water, then uh, the first thing we need to do is the Arduino needs to, uh, we need to convert the Arduino signal into something that the board can work with. The Arduino can only do positive, so the first amp amp uh, lets us flip that into positive voltage and negative voltage. Then the second op amp, so the Arduino sends uh, square pulses and we need something rounder. So uh, in order to smooth it out, we need to remove the high pass. So this is a, a low pass filter right here. The third op amp, uh, with, the thanks, with, with the help of this uh, potentiometer up here, lets us tune how much power we have so we can magnify or reduce the, the signal. Um, so we can tune how much energy we put into our oscillator into our uh, yeah, oscillating uh, nuclei. These three uh, relays right here kind of help us time everything. So it lets us uh, connect the, the transceiver coil to ground so everything's quiet, you know, there's no like background noise that gets built up into there. Then uh, as soon as it's ready, we cut that so we, we unground the coil. Then we open up the transceiver, the transmitter so that we can send information into the coil. And then we close, well, I guess we open up the receiver and then we close the uh, listener so that any noise back here can't get to the front of the system. And we listen to the response from the hydrogen nuclei. So then we've got these, uh, the three op amps at the end. The first one is a magnifier. So we're, you know, we're listening to uh, protons and they're extremely quiet. We're not in a high magnetic field. So these things, yeah. So we have a thousand fold uh, magnification of the proton signal of, yeah, of the received, of the echo basically. Then uh, we have a bandpass filter, which, uh, you know, we've got all this noise, everything gets magnified a thousand fold. And, but we only care about a small spectrum of radiation coming back out of the system. So we uh, narrow that down with a bandpass filter. And then finally, we need to change, uh, you know, the, the plus and minus voltages back to something the Arduino can listen to. And so that's what the last op amp does. It kind of flips everything back and gets it in the right range. So this is a plot of what the system looks like without the water, actually with the water in it, but with the magnetic field um, so that the, the water can't line up with the Earth's magnetic field. And so in this direction, in the uh, X direction, we have the frequency. So low frequencies over here and high frequencies over here. And then in the vertical direction, you get, you get like a, a, an idea of the amount of energy put in or that we listen here. So you see that uh, we have like these large spikes every 120 volt, every 120 hertz. And that corresponds to the uh, wall sockets, you know, the, the energy that's all around us that powers everything. It's everywhere. And the noise from it gets everywhere. And then, you know, there's little bits of noise here and there too, because, you know, we're not in a lab settings, we're in my house. And finally, there's this uh, weird curve here, and I believe that has to do with um, my polarization circuit. I'm not entirely sure where, um, but I think there's some sort of resonance there, and um, either way, it, it doesn't come up too often. 
And so this is what you get with the water in there and with no magnetic field um, except for the Earth's magnetic field. And you see that everything basically looks the same except for we also have this tiny smooth pulse right here. And that is the hydrogen nuclei talking back to us. That is the, the bits unflipping and the energy being released and us catching it and listening to it. So most of the challenges in this system boil down to noise. Uh, originally, I was using a 5 volt power supply from a PC, a PSU, and uh, that brought in a bunch of noise, plus there was some sort of weird rot resonance, which made things way worse. So instead, I switched out to a, you know, just a regular LiPo battery for remote-controlled airplanes. But um, this is a 3S, and so it comes in at 11 volts, and, so, and we need 5 volts. The system's tuned for 5 volts. So, um, in order to get that down, I used uh, 5 volt regulators. Now, and this connected, I need to reconnect this, but uh, the problem with the 5 volt regulators is that they're set for 5 amps. So, and we're doing uh, 10 to 20, well, 10 to 15 amps. Um, I think the paper says 16 amps. And so, um, yeah, so as you can see, I have four in parallel so that the, uh, they can add up to 20 amp uh, capabilities. Uh, another issue I had was with noise. So um, if you put this on a prototype board or breadboard, um, then you're gonna have cables going everywhere. And each cable is a chance for noise to come in because they're basically antennas. So um, then I designed this PCB from the circuit and it's got a couple of uh, useful tips or uh, things that help with the noise. Uh, one of them is, so here is the plus 15 volts that we need to run the op amps and the minus 15 volts. And um, it, nor, basically those are coming in from long cables. So there's a 100 nanofarad and a 10 nanofarad capacitor right here, which kind of helps dampen that out. Um, then in order to spread that out to all of the op amps, I have a large flat plane, which makes it hard for, you know, it can't, it's not antenna because it's a flat plane. And so the distance, like the amount of antennability, I guess you don't know what to call it, um, is low and it, it doesn't catch noise very easily. And down here is, you know, the same, another uh, minus 15 volt plane. Then the whole backside is the ground plane. So again, no antennability, no, no way to catch noise. And um, yeah, and then similarly on the polarizing PCB, we have flat plane, we have a uh, flat plane of ground, we have the large uh, traces for the large amounts of power to run the polarizing coil, and this is part of the circuit where there's an opto isolator so that noise can't get in from the Arduino to the system or the system to the Arduino, uh, back and forth. Uh, one other thing is, as you can see, I have this can of WD-40. But, uh, so, in order to get an NMR to work, you need all of the, or as many of the hydrogen atoms facing the same direction as possible, um, which means that you, the field has to be as uniform as possible. And if there's any metal in the house, I mean, you know, this is wood, and you saw earlier, the other part's wood too, so that helps. And I had to move some couches out of the way because they had metal in them. Uh, so that helps. But there's a thing called shimmying, which is kind of like you move metal in on purpose and you kind of like undo the, the issues that were caused by other objects by adding more objects. And you just kind of play around with it until uh, you've canceled out and you've got the magnetic field going as straight as possible. I originally tried uh, five, 15 volt power supplies to get that, uh, the bias voltages and they were also very noisy. So I switched over to cell phone chargers. Um, as you can see, I have six, five volts, so you know, five, 10, 15 plus, five, 10, 15 minus, and then they're all connected in series so that they add up and you can you know, get the information back, they get the power back and forth. Um, then one trick though is I had to change the mode. So uh, normally the op amps don't, pr don't pull enough current for these guys to think that someone's on you know, using them, so they turn off. But if you hold down this button here, um, then it changes modes to just putting out power no matter what. And yeah, and so I have to like set them up before I do any experiments. 
One last thing uh, is that this system is set up for the magnetic, the Earth's magnetic field strength on the West Coast, and I live in Central U.S. So um, right here in the bandpass circuit, I changed this 370 to, um, I believe, 400 uh, ohms. And um, all you have to do is look up the Larmor frequency for uh, hydrogens and then pull out your phone and figure out what your magnetic field strength is in your area and plug that in and then uh, find a calculator for bandpass circuits and then you can figure out uh, what to change this one to. Um, and I'll have a link to the resources I used for that um, in order to bandpass the right frequency. So yeah, I won't be cranking any you know cryptography mysteries with this. Um, but my end goal is to factor the number 6 into 2 and 3. Uh, I'll have links down below um, for my PCB, my PCB notes. I made a couple of mistakes in the PCB, everyone does. Uh, no trace removing of shame, but I did have to add a couple of capacitor resistors um, to ground planes that I forgot to add. Um, I plan on making a physics video explaining another video explaining all the physics of uh, this system uh, so subscribe if that sounds interesting to you and uh, yeah um, I'd like to thank Carl Michelle for answering my emails I'd like to thank my friend Damon um, for electrical engineering experience and his uh, uh, idea understanding the op amps I don't think it, it would have made more, as much sense as it did without his help and my hen, my friend Evan Reeves for um, just general support. So yeah, stay crunchy.